Good evening, Arlington. My name is Ed Boquillen. I'm the Superintendent Director of Minuteman Regional. I'm here to present our FY22 budget, which we've entitled Preparing for Our Reality. Overall, our budget is up 8.4%, including all operating and all capital expenditures. Our FY22 summary, if we break it out, our operating budget is up a modest 2.4% over this fiscal year. Our operating capital and debt is up about 400,000. I'll explain that in a bit. And our MSBA project debt is up significantly over this year, which we have projected and have been speaking about in our towns for a couple of years, that we're hitting some of the peak borrowing years um, for the new building. So as part of the FY22 budget process, we had to make some revenue assumptions. These numbers are not the final numbers because the state budget has not been passed, but you'll see that we're utilizing more tuition from out of district revenue. And we're also using some of the capital fee that we began collecting um, in FY20 to offset assessments to our member towns. One of the things that we've been uh, enjoying over the last couple of years is a, an increase in admissions and enrollment from our member towns. Um, you can see our total applications as of May 3rd is up, is about the same as it was last year, but the number of in-district applications has continued to grow and is uh, more than twice what it was just five years ago. Out-of-district applications continue from eligible communities and ineligible communities. I will say briefly that an eligible out-of-district application is from a community that has no vocational technical programming available to it. So this year we're going to have a slightly larger wait list, which includes some member communities, as well as uh, most of the out-of-district applicants have been put on a waiting list at this time. We are anticipating a freshman class of 200. Um, and some of the other assumptions that we made in this budget include some form of COVID will be with us. I hope we're um, continue to make progress in keeping our staff and students safe. But as we built this budget, we assumed that there would be some kind of a hybrid model that we uh, would enter the fall with. We had uh, assumed at the beginning of the budget process, which begins in October, um, some reduced state aid or unknown state and federal aid. And as of this presentation, uh, the recording of this presentation, we still do not have a state budget. Um, we projected that our final MSBA project bond would be secured. Uh, student interest in CTE, as I mentioned in the previous slide, continues to, to be strong. Our current enrollment is beyond the approved design capacity of this new building. We currently have 634 students. We're projecting about 680 in the following in the fall, this coming fall. Uh, so we're looking at cost effective plans to increase the capacity of the school. The design enrollment capacity that was approved was 628. And we really need to figure out a way to increase the capacity uh, in a cost-effective way without borrowing any money, without asking for more money from our towns. The priorities that we have, um, as all school budgets have, is protecting student and staff health. Again, as I mentioned, trying to increase enrollment capacity and delivering high-quality career in tech ed. We are adding an animal science program, which will begin this fall. We're also expanding our engineering um, programming to uh, move into the logistics engineering space. Uh, <clears throat> we believe in FY22 that we will close out the MSBA project. Our athletic fields construction has begun. We want to continue to manage that effectively. And as COVID uh, restrictions become lessened, we hope to ramp up our facilities rental and accordingly the revenue for, for that. Our big cost drivers in the operating side of the budget is a, a cost of living increase for teachers. We are in year two of a three-year agreement. 
The next year, the cost of living is 2%. We have seen a spike in our electrical and heat, even in the new building. Um, and we're trying to plan for that. We don't completely understand it all. Some of it is based upon COVID. We're operating our um, HVAC systems at full capacity. And we've been operating in a hybrid model for all of this year. So we don't have bodies in the building producing BTUs and therefore our heat costs have gone up. But we're gonna to continue to track that um, as we move forward. Some of the new um, systems that are in the building require maintenance contracts. Once our new fields come online, there'll be a slight increase in our uh, maintenance and operations of our, our athletic fields. Property insurance has gone up, and for the first time in many, many years, I am reporting a decrease in our health insurance. And this is mainly due to a reduction in staffing that was initiated as we went into COVID last March, and we're maintaining it um, throughout FY22. Our transportation budget has decreased because we had a competitive bidding process, and that represents our um, contract with the busing company being under what we budgeted in FY21. Arlington's assessment is 6.7. That's the full assessment. That's an increase of $682,000. When you break out the assessment, uh, the minimum required local contribution is 2.4. Arlington's portion of the transportation is about $250,000. The operating assessment at 2.1. The debt and capital that's within our operating budget is about 366,000. And then the debt service, um, 1.6 million, which was previously voted on by Arlington to exclude from the uh, Prop 2.5 limitations. Enrollment in Arlington continues to be strong. This year we're about 170 students. Our regional agreement requires that your assessment be uh, averaged over four years of enrollment. So the spike and increase has been taken out, even though Arlington has a significant assessment. Um, it's being moderated by the uh, new regional agreement. Special education enrollment continues to be high. Minuteman has traditionally been between 46 and 50% of our total population are receiving um, services under special ed in order for them to access the curriculum. When you look at special ed costs as a percentage of our budget a few years ago, um, a significant portion of our budget is uh, dedicated to uh, serving students on IEPs. Just a little bit more detail on our capital budget for FY22, um, athletic fields, the lighting payment for 1.9 million for uh, that is included in this budget. Our ESCO, we still are paying on an ESCO project. That's an energy service contract. It was a tax exempt municipal lease that was taken out, I believe in 2009. We have a few more years to pay on that. And all 16 towns are paying on that ESCO. And the school building project um, increase, we are we did the final bonding a few months ago. Um, we came in at under 2%. And I shared some of those projections with the FinCom. Um, our capital stabilization fund, which we created about six or seven years ago, we're continuing to support that. And that represents a $260,000 increase in the capital stabilization fund. Uh, just a little bit more breakout of how the FY22 operating and capital is looking for FY22. Just to um, review our athletic fields and the lighting project has begun. Um, construction is ongoing right now. We expect to be substantially complete with three synthetic fields fully lit. Um, this fall. Uh, we believe that uh, and we are putting aside $168,000 a year um, and hopefully from our rental revolving accounts so that when the synthetic turf replacement needs to be done we don't have to add 
um, that to a budget in one lump sum. We're going to be planning for that now. Our photovoltaic roof installation has begun. This secures an, a $2 million of reimbursement, which we had been planning on. Um, the contract was approved in January. Um, it's physically being constructed now. Uh, it will be in operation this fall. It's a 20-year lease purchase. It saves us about $30,000 to $40,000 a year on electrical costs. But the big win with this installation was securing um, the reimbursement of $2 million from the state. OPEB liability, uh, just to give you a snapshot of that, our liability as of last June was about $32 million. We've been putting a small amount aside every year in an OPEB reserve fund. This budget increases it slightly to our to 60,000. Um, the Minuteman Finance Committee's long-term strategy to fund our OPEB liability is when the ESCO debt comes off of our books, which will be in FY25, we will direct uh, much of that to our OPEB liability over the long term. We have a reserve fund for capital stabilization. The current balance is 1.2 million. The school committee voted 1.25 of that to go for the fields project. And just you may be wondering why that reserve fund is so high. When we established that fund, we anticipated that the MSBA reimbursement for furniture, fixtures, and equipment would be inadequate for a vocational technical school. In the meantime, we were much more successful in a, uh, getting grants from the state for new equipment. So that cable capital stabilization fund uh, balance uh, is was not needed in the way that we anticipated. So it's going to be committed to further capital projects, including the athletic field. Um, and I mentioned our OPEB trust. The current balance is modest at three three hundred fifty thousand. Um, so overall, the budget summary again. Uh, operating up about two and a half percent. Our operating capital debt is up about four hundred thousand, and the big the big increase is our uh, debt payments on the new school. Again, just to re review Arlington's uh, preliminary assessment, and I use the word preliminary because we still don't have a state budget. Um, the assessment will not go up from this number; it can only um, go down but we're making sure that we're planning appropriately. Um, thank you, I'd be happy to take questions in, in, a, in a manner through the moderator. I appreciate it and uh, appreciate Arlington's support. Thank you.